The Cardinal Ace is taking all the heat for this season's lackluster performance. No excuses, just can't explain it. Just not pitching good. Nobody wants to see him go through this, but it's it's where we're at. Adam Wainwright is toast. I deserve all the negative that I'm getting right now. I deserve it. Is chasing after 200 wins, is it worth it? I thought today was going to be the day, for sure. Cardinals ace Adam Wainwright deactivated his Twitter account. I'm not retired yet, all right? My stuff is still good. I heard what you said. I heard what you said. This is not how any of us wanted this year to go. I don't. I, honestly, I don't know what I could have done differently, you know? This season, Adam Wainwright has become definitively the worst starting pitcher in all of baseball. Of pitchers with at least 80 innings pitched this season, he's bottom of the league in earn run average, walks and hits per nine innings, batting average against, strikeout to walk ratio. Most baseball fans are aware of the legendary career he's had up until this point. Over 400 career games started, 18 years in the league, two World Series championships, all with the same team. Last year, his longtime teammates Albert Pujols and Yadier Molina decided to walk away from the game they loved, but Wayno hung around for one more go around. Why did he do this exactly? Well, I think he did it to chase history, and today's video is an evaluation on if chasing history in baseball is really worth it. His 2023 season exists as the uglier side to refusing to hang up your cleats, and it's all been in the pursuit of 200 wins on his career, a mark that he might not even reach at the end of the season. Now, this concept is not foreign to baseball history. We've seen so many great players hang on for just a year or two too long, leaving us with some pretty comical footnotes in their resumes. For example, Jose Bautista etched his name into Toronto's history with multiple top five MVP finishes and 300 home runs in a decade span, but many people also remember his bizarre three-team tour in the NL East in his final season in 2018. He was just trying to stay in baseball whatever way he could. Pudge Rodriguez was an MVP winning catcher with 13 gold gloves and a World Series ring on his mantle, yet he spent his final two seasons playing for the pre-Strasburg Washington to Nationals, posting the worst offensive numbers of his career by far. 39-year-old Al Leiter could have sailed off into the sunset after a remarkable seven-year run with the New York Mets, but he decided to return to both of his former teams in the same season in 2005, posting the worst numbers of his career by far. Now, it's hard to fault any of these guys, including the aforementioned Adam Wainwright, who we're going to spend a whole lot more time on. To ask a baseball player to give up the dream they got to live out is a fruitless endeavor, even if the timing is obviously right. And the sakes of this group even larger when baseball history is on the line. Derek Jeter chased 3,000 hits until the bitter end and reached his goal in dramatic fashion, even if his last few years were a shell of his former self riddled with injuries. Tim Wakefield pitched until he was 44 years old, two years removed from his last above league average season, likely in an effort to etch his name into the 200 win club, which he did in the 460th start of his career. Adam Wainwright is chasing that same goal, but while his aforementioned contemporaries struggled in their final Final seasons, Wainwright has taken the standard to an unfathomable new low. Waino entered the season at 195 wins, and 20 starts later, he's still chasing history. It's hard to say if he'll even get there this season because he's easily been the worst qualified starter in all of baseball this season. Wins aren't even really a statistic that matter as most middle-aged and young baseball fans realize, but baseball is a counting stat sport, and records are more important in our sport compared to basically any other one. This means something. We brushed on it before, but let's really examine this season. Per the recording of this video, no pitcher in baseball with at least 80 innings has averaged more runs allowed, more base runners allowed, and less strikeouts per every walk issued. Wainwright is in the lowest percentile for eight different categories on his Savant reference page, which I did not even think was possible. His sinker at a negative 23 run value and 400 batting average against is the worst pitch in baseball by far. He's allowed four earned runs or more in 11 of his 19 starts, a the majority of his starts. He also gave up eight runs and one inning of work against the worst team in baseball, the Kansas City Royals. With a couple more rough starts, which is looking likely, Adam Wainwright will be the first pitcher in the expansion era with a whip over two in a full season of 100 innings. He will be the first pitcher in the last 100 years with 100 innings and an ERA above eight in a season. At 41 years old, Adam Wainwright isn't just bad. He's historically bad. Spencer Strider has multiplied Wainwright's 
percent strikeout to walk rate by 10. No qualified hitter in Major League Baseball is hitting as high as the opponent's average against Wayno, making every hitter that faces him the de facto MLB batting champion in said at bat. Only three players in baseball have a higher OPS than the mark against Wayno, and those three are Mookie Betts, Corey Seager, and Shohei Otani, two of those guys probably winning MVP awards this season. In a career spanning thousands of innings, this single poor season has raised his career ERA nearly a quarter of a run, which is incredibly hard to do 18 years into a career. I could go off on tangents around the marvel that is this horrific final season all day long, but in the end, that just feels mean-spirited. The thing that makes it all the more perplexing is that this switch basically happened on a dime. In 2021 and 2022, the last two full seasons of play, Wainwright tossed over 190 innings both times with an above-league average ERA+, plus, which is a metric that puts ERA on a rounded scale, with 100 being a league average mark. He was one of just two pitchers in baseball to do so alongside last year's National League Cy Young, Sandy Alcantara. That's nothing to scoff at, especially considering Wayno was 39 and 40 years old in those seasons. But it's no secret why this has happened to Wayno. He's getting ahead in the count 10% less than last year. He's walking more batters than he has in the last four years. From last year to now, the velocities on all of his pitches are down at least two miles per hour each, which might as well be eating Chinese food before you run a half marathon. Wayno was never a flamethrower in the bottom 10 percentile of fastball velocity since the inception of StatCast in 2015, but this is too much to overcome. Father Time has caught up and won the race by a large margin. But the point of this video isn't to dunk on a guy who spent nearly two decades in the league, probably just one year too long. This video exists to answer the question posed at the beginning. At this point, can chasing history truly be considered worth it? Has the way that Adam Wainwright has pitched this season permanently affected his legacy, all in the pursuit of that 200th win? Let's analyze any prior cases as bad as this one. If you ask anyone who the best relievers in baseball history are, a couple names usually float to the top quickly. Mariano Rivera and Trevor Hoffman, the only two closers in baseball history to eclipse 600 saves in their career. At 41 years old, Trevor Hoffman pitched for a team not named the San Diego Padres for the first time in over 15 years, but he didn't skip a beat. He was fourth among all relievers in both ERA and WHIP and racked up 37 saves on the season despite the Brewers finishing with a losing record. Hoffman only blew three opportunities on the year as well, making the most of every chance he got. That's all great, but it also landed Hoffman at 591 saves for his career, needing less than 10 more to join a club thought to be completely unreachable. Naturally, after a great season with the milestone in reach, he felt compelled to come back. But at 42 years old, the wheels fell completely off in what became his final season. Hoffman blew five of his first 10 save chances, allowing 19 earned runs in just 13 innings of work, causing him to lose the closer role entirely by mid-May. That put this entire pursuit and final season in jeopardy. For three months, the legendary closer didn't receive a single save opportunity. That is until the Brewers fell deep under 500 and decided to reinsert Hoffman for one last chance at history. Staring down the barrel of retirement, Trevor Hoffman found himself again. From August 7th to the end of the season, Hoffman went 5 for 5 in save chances, notching the landmark 600th save a month after winning back the closer's job. He was not sharp by any means, but he avoided the complete disaster of tarnishing his legacy and missing out on the record-setting save in the process. Cutting through what clearly was the worst year of his career, Trevor Hoffman achieved the entire goal of coming back for one more year. Would I say that his legacy was affected by this poor season permanently? Maybe a little bit, but for the most part, it stems from the fact that he made it to his goal in the end that really preserved the entire thing. That seems to be the common denominator with many of these final season pursuits of glory. Randy Johnson will never look right in a San Francisco Giants uniform, but he took their call in 2009 to try and secure five more wins in his illustrious 22-year career. Despite posting easily the worst numbers of his career at 45 years old, Johnson got his fifth win of the season with six shutout innings on a rainy day in DC, notching 300 wins in his career. People remember that highlight, not him pitching for San Francisco in the first place. It goes beyond there as well. After pitching to a 2.5 ERA, racking up over 250 saves, a Cy Young, and a World Series ring in the first eight years of his career, Bruce Suter fell off a cliff at age 32 when he joined Atlanta in 1985. But through injury and poor performance, he gutted through, pitching all the way until 1988, where he secured 10 saves in a season to take his career total to 300. He notched that save in what would become his final career appearance, retiring after tearing his rotator cuff just a year after shoulder surgery. And most people remember the peak of his career and the fact that he made it to the 300 save club in the first place, not those final dwindling seasons. There are also 
also guys that were clearly still super talented even in their old age. In 1999, Wade Boggs played for the 93 Lost Devil Rays team at 41 years old and made it into the 3000 hit club, hitting 301 in his last go around, proving that he could still hack it 18 years into his career. 40 year old Gary Sheffield was certainly an odd fit on the 2009 Mets in their first season at City Field, but his second home run of the season marked the 500th of his career and what turned out to be a really productive final season for the slugger. So the point of all this has become very clear with the other examples. Chasing baseball history in your final season, even way past your prime, can become worth it if you reach that goal in the end, which is what every athlete thinks they will do when they agree to come back in the first place. But there are also examples that are less notable of these guys who came back at the end and didn't reach their goals. Armando Benitez lost his closer role completely in the final two seasons of his career, pitching to an ERA well over five and falling 11 saves short of the 300 save club that Suter made it into. Carl Crawford's explosive career fizzled in the mid-2010s with the Dodgers, failing to steal a single base in 30 games in 2016, which ended his career just 20 swipes shy of the 500 stolen base club. 40-year-old Fred McGriff certainly looked out of place on the 2004 Devil Rays, his second go-around with that franchise. He hit just two home runs in 20 games before getting cut in mid-July, seven bombs shy of joining the illustrious 500 Homer Club. Again, these legacies weren't tarnished by any means, but the careers of these great players weren't enhanced by coming back at the very end for what clearly was seasons past their prime. It's of course unfair to ask players not to seize these opportunities to continue playing the game they love, but it'd be false to suggest that seeing ugly numbers at the end of their career resumes isn't at least a little bit disappointing. For Adam Wainwright though, this has been taken to a new extreme. His season has become so unbelievably bad that it begs the question of whether or not this will all even become worth it even if he does notch win number 200 in the end. While we noted some pretty rough final seasons for some legendary players, I don't believe any compared to the scale in which Adam Wainwright has been completely ineffective. Hello, me again at a different studio with a different mic, so apologies for that. I originally had another outro recorded, but then something happened. Adam Wainwright got a win over the Baltimore Orioles, who have been the best team in the American League this year. Now he's at 199 wins, only needing one more to get to that historic 200 win club. I still question whether chasing history is worth it, but it further validates my point that if Wayno does get to 200, I think it's all not going to matter in the end, and he has a few more starts to try and get there. You know, he had lost seven starts in a row, 10 of his last decisions after starting 3-1. and one, He fell all the way to 3-11. and 11. He's now 4-11. and 11. But even though he caused me misery as a Mets fan 15 years ago, I'm rooting for Wayno because I don't want this entire endeavor to be fruitless for him and Cardinals fans. I think he deserves it in the end. He's had a legendary career and I'm rooting for him. Probably the first time I'll be rooting for the Cardinals ever in his last three starts. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and the deep dive into other, you know, failed or successful retirement seasons. If you did, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It's free. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it. And if you stuck around this long, why don't you hear a word from today's sponsor of the video, which is Shady Rays. Thank you to Shady Rays for sponsoring today's video. Right now, they have an amazing deal going on where if you use code JOLLY over at their website, you can get 50% off two or more pairs of premium polarized sunglasses. You might have missed it. Jimmy and Jake, the head honchos over at John Boy Media, where I work, have their own signature collab pairs that were exclusive for a little bit. Now you can use this same code to get your hands on those as well. I got my aviators rocking right now. And best of all, even if I lose them or drop them and break them, Shady Rays is going to replace my sunglasses no questions asked because they have the best warranty program in the entire sunglasses business they just want to make sure you're wearing your shady rays wherever you go long after your purchase no questions asked whatever happened to your original pair so click the link in my description or go to shadyrays.com right now check out their selection because there's tons to look at and then when you're ready to check out use code jolly for 50 percent off two or more pairs of sunglasses this is an amazing deal who knows how long it'll be around so take advantage of it right now thank you so much to shady rays for sponsoring today video and I'll see you guys next time.